conventional wisdom says that the sound that bikes make can be described by the word vroom. Among many other commonly used sounds that mimic a bike's exhaust sound. These bike sounds are very important to most riders and motorcycle enthusiasts alike. They simply add a gist to any ride. The sounds are each differently defined, primarily depending on the engine layout and displacement among other factors like design of the exhaust system, type of clutch, compression rate, engine size, just to mention but a few. Biking is where style meets some speed, passion and precision and of course leaving the vrooms behind making everyone turn heads as they watch the bikes zoom past them. Today we meet up with a team of nine bikers, the R Squad. Since 2021, this team throttled themselves in the symphony of revving engines and the thrill of two wheels for the road. So from the far end is Edwin, followed by Dennis, followed by Kalayu, myself, Eddie, Peter, Stone, Jafari, Kaguiria, resident mechanic himself, Mr. Evans, and Watiri. The thrill of owning a bike is the first thr thrill I think is freedom because the freedom you enjoy outside here let's say we are heading for town you in a car me on a bike first I'll get there before you so that's an advantage second while you'll be struggling in the jam I'll be free thirdly you, you enjoy the adrenaline and uh, a bike, I would say it's a safe space for some people. Because uneza kuko na stress, unapandia bike, unatoka, it clears up. You can't ride kama umeja za kili. So you have to be sober to be on the bike. So yeah. Our squad ilianza from another group. Most of us here are sitaki kwa ita newbies. Because I think now we've done uh, two years for all of us. So I will not want to say saisi si bado ni newbies, but when our squad started, most of us were, that was two years ago. There is somebody who had an initiative to bring uh, newbies together. So, akatuleta pamoja in some group. Tukakaka uko, then uh, we tried planning rides. So one happened. And on one beautiful Saturday morning, watu waka, lead, waka head out to Namanga. And that is where our squad started. 10th October, 2021. Together, they search and find something satisfying and exhilarating on bikes. We are nine of us. All the nine of us have different bikes. We have a Zontes 200J. We have a Haoshen. That's a, <laughs> a crossbreed of a Haojin and a Zongshen. <laughs> we have a Jigsa Suzuki 650. We have a Jigsa 155. I personally ride a Benelli 302. Peter rides a CBR Honda. Frida recently started riding a Mammoth, the KL KLR 650. Our resident mechanic, <laughs> several bikes. But his most loved is the Kawasaki. To them, there is more to riding. It comes with freedom and shared sense of community among riders. R stands for, stands for so many things. So it could be a responsibility to not just to me, but also to my family. Sijazali wa peke yangu, waona? Niko mimi, mandogu zangu, pale nimetoka, kuna wazazi. So you need to take that responsibility first. Then it moves on to the next R. It could be maybe, what are re your revenue income? What is your rent? Where does it come from? We, we factor in some of these things in so many ways that it's so that it sinks together into the R's code. We have our main theme, which is the CSR aspect. What is CSR? Uh, going out into the community, helping it out, but we do it on the two wheels. Uh, when it comes to the next R, it could be friendship. We are built with friends around us. You're not a silo. 
you work and live hata pale unaishi kuna jirani sivyo ujirani yako siku moja if something happens they'll be the first person you run to we also have to the extent of having a, a nyumba kumi because you own a bike so that is key essential for you when it comes to the next r as a friend i'm not just in this group to just sit around and not bond with someone else i know peter the next thing i think will be attending his wedding please come for it you know so we move to that aspect so unaona pale sasa tutajua bibi yake tutajua wazazi na kila mtu watoto wakikuja will have the next juniors on board <laughs> so when it comes to the r in r school there are so many things that are covered so what are we aiming at we started in 2021 we are all newbies right now we are two years in and we're looking forward to the next amazing years to come this is solid for this team and it is what has taken them from town to town we were formed as a riding club we've managed to go to uganda this year and one of us has two of us actually did a trip around uh, the whole of east africa and uh, one of us has recently been in a tour to dubai on an e-bike so those have been the major successes for us this year we are out here to just promote and also promote uh, and impact the society through our activities mainly this could be on a positive impact or just by show of word by just being there for someone else we also building ourselves up we are not always 100% on bikes we atu atu am kitu tuna ride kila siku kuna watu wengine hapa wanafanya 8 to 5 kuna watu wengine hapa they are self employed and all that so we taking so many things and uh, from it all we are looking to adding more people into the group so that we can all grow out and bubble so at the end of it all community is first and then the rest will follow we don't know what is up there or 3 4 years to come but we are working we are working on it as our squad ride itself to the future aspirations we want to check out some of the cool bikes they own for starters bikers and bikes will instantly earn points and attention whenever they show up their boots chaps jackets gloves are fashionable and their sleek bikes do not seek any attention at all they are simply noticeable wheels and thrills today will show off some cool bikes from our squad my name is Dennis Ivan Satieno I'm a member of our squad and I'm the in-house mechanic resident mechanic as they refer for all the bike uh, in the club so everything we do for the team we try to consolidate everything our squad as a one stop unit and today here I am with the KLR 650 it's a japanese make model bike under the brand of Kawasaki it's an in a short language it's an ADV bike adventure bike suitable for off road terrains and also town ridings and uh, it comes with a 21 inch front wheel with the telescopic suspensions that enable you to have a little bit of smooth riding on rough terrains and uh, the rear wheel is it's an 18 inch rim with a drive set of 525 that gives you a little bit of more torque on the riding and strength durability with a good quality chain the uh, front wheel comes with a single disc uh, braking system rotor of a uh, 260 mm with the rear which is the rear one is a uh, 240 mm so it's an all system simple bike not nothing much complicated no much electronics it's just fuel a little bit of electronics like the lighting system nothing complicated so it's a very suitable bike for off-road terrains and adventures that will give you perseverance wherever applicable in another name it's a, it's a, it's nicknamed the workhorse for adventure riding So apart from that um we have uh, extra accessories that have been added to the bike for visibility most of the adventure bike do like the auxiliary lights these lights are in two versions it comes it turns up in yellow and white it's an led very bright and uh we have the stock headlight which is still powerful enough although 
as adventure riders with late night ridings in the darkness in the wilderness you prefer a little bit of extra light that uh, enables you to see more 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 apart from that you also have the extra big huge indicator turn signals that are very visible no matter what the occasion is so it enables the drivers or incoming traffic to see your intentions of turning whatever directions you want to take um, when you come from that you have an extra addition that you can usually do on an adventure bike that things are very simple that make your life easy when you're doing the off-road trails we have the extra soft bags for carrying extra luggages for your long distance safaris that with the way they fit in you can put your luggage add on so these are what we call the soft bag pa panniers easy light fitted bags that you can add your cargo accessories for your long distance ranges for your safaris or how far you want to go it comes on both sides left and right and one at the top although there are dozens that come in the metal casings if you want the hard compound stuff that you want to put on your bike that add up something like you can view on other bikes if you're familiar with the gs 1200s and so but uh, this is the applicable bike for any mid person starting to do an adventure it's a 650cc very economical fuel wise it's carrying a tank capacity of about 30 liters of fuel so you have a longer range and being a single cylinder it will give you maximum output of performance no matter how far you want to go um, apart from that the other accessories you can add on to the bike to make your life comfortable for the adventures you can add heated grips that to keep your hands warm well, electrically you power them on whenever it's raining so your hands don't freeze when you're riding so it's a simple bike i wouldn't say so much about it but it gives you the best of what you want on an adventure riding and it does an exquisite job on the off-roads. Uh, it's a simple one. It's a single cylinder tamper with about 45 uh, newton meters of torque. Sorry, uh, not 45 newton meters of torque, uh, 65 if I'm not wrong. Yeah. My name is Edwin. I am a member of our squad. I ride this bike. So this is a Suzuki GSX 650F. Um, it's a 209 model. The engine is 656cc, max 85 horsepower um, and 61 newton meters of torque. Um, yeah, so it's the engine is liquid cooled, four cylinder, so an inline four. Um, with uh, an exhaust system for your Shimura, which is one of the best sounding exhaust systems actually um, that you'll find around. So this is a sport touring bike. It's kind of in the middle between, in the middle of um, uh, your typical sports bike and a tourer. So the, the handlebars are a bit more raised so that you're not, you don't have that very aggressive riding position. The seat is a lot more comfortable. It's longer, the chassis is longer compared to a regular you know, sports bike. So, from the from the from the front, so the headlights has um, you know full LED LED headlights. Um, the color is this is a custom color, so satin red and satin black, um, telescopic Fox, and you know 310 mm dual disc brakes. So it has uh, discs on both sides with uh, you know the Tokiko braking system, and then at the rear we have a 240 mm brake. Um, yeah, so tires. Um, I use uh, uh, you know the sport touring tires. Currently running the Bridgestone T32s, which have really good grip on both wet and, and dry roads. Um, yeah, then I also installed some auxiliary lighting system because you know Kenyan roads are not properly lit, and sometimes the stock headlight doesn't give you much. Um, yeah, the other interesting thing about this bike, and like most bikes, is that so it runs a hydraulic clutch system compared to. The others which uh, you've seen use um, the wire that pulls the, that actuates the clutch. This one uses hydraulic system. So you put brake fluid on both the brakes and the, um, and the hydraulic clutch system. Being a touring bike, it has a big tank because it needs to give you a bigger range. So this is 19 liters of fuel. 
um, it consumes about 19 to 20 kilometers per liter. So on the 19 liters of fuel, depending on how hard you're riding, can give you about 350 kilometers on one full tank. Um, yeah, as I said, the exhaust is, um, is a Yoshimura. I'll, I'll start it so you can hear how, how it trembles. So yeah, that's, so that's really nice. I also installed this. Now at, at the back here, if you can check the back here, I've done a lot of touring on this bike. Um, in August, I did a 5,000 kilometer journey around East Africa. So went around all these countries. So Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, um, and, and Tanzania. So it handles really well, really comfortable. It has good speed. Um, yeah, really, really comfortable bike. And it's also a bike that on the twisties, if you want to enjoy like the you know, sports bike, typical sports bike, you can also, you can also get to do that. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it. Um, I'll start it so you can hear. So you can hear the exhaust. Yeah. So on the highways, it's uh, you know. It's so that On this other second bike, we have the famous Benelli 302S. It's a 2019 model. It comes with a simple naked look kind of a bike. Uh, it's more of a street bike with aggression look for people who have adrenaline rush with the naked wind running all over their body. Um, as you can see, it has a big white LED light that comes with the inter integrated DRLs that ride out with the projector headlight. Very powerful light, simple, but again, for bikers, you really love our visibility is key. So it has some extras like the auxiliary lights similar to the adventure bikes that makes things a little bit better. Uh, I would say this bike is more suitable for street riding and town riding and inter-counties if you want to do as long as you're doing a lot of tarmac. It's really reliable and has a good performance. With a Newton, uh, it has a brake horsepower of about 38 with a torque of uh, 26 newton meters of torque so for a simple inline twin cylinder it's a twin cylinder engine it does a performance a good good performance it's a fro it's a italian brand name benelli but in conjunction with the chinese after it was sold out to a new ownership but it's still a good performance with the dual disc at the front that comes with dual discs for better braking and in the, with an inverted tele inverted suspension system so the front disc is about uh, 270 disc mm radius and the rear one is still the same as uh, Kawasaki is a 240 mm radius. Um, another advantage of, of this bike, it comes with an ABS braking system. So for people who are not very good in the braking, the ABS kind of assists you in stopping without uh, locking your wheels and having a slide and all that. So it keeps you safe and better riding and prevents you from crashing and uh, wiping out or we say low siding because of skidding when you have road brakes. Um, wouldn't say so much but uh, as a key factor when it comes to riding safety is always number one and it starts with your gearing issues. What I mean by gearing issues is your outfits. You have to make sure you wear the right gears for riding. If you don't you're putting yourself at risk before you even start riding. So it's very important Make sure you have your helmet on, make sure you have your gloves on, make sure you have your knee guards on, your riding boots, or even if it's possible, your riding attire like the jacket and the pants for leather. In case of uh, for, uh, if you happen to fall down or you have an accident, they're going to help you by protecting your body because they have some extra features for safety. So, key, I think that is the best I can say. The rest is a learning process. As you come into biking, you get to know more and more because every day is a learning process. Even I, being in the industry for so long, I'm still learning. So there's no stopping of learning when it comes to biking. Every day is a learning process. Beyond these cool bike features that thrill most of us, riders admit that riding comes with a lot of risks and challenges. I, being a female biker or rider, it's quite, and I cannot even exhaust them right now, but uh, we have to be there. We have to get on the road. We don't have to be scared to to leave our bikes in the parking. So the moment you get on your bike, there's that freedom aspect. 
and then you should be ready to encounter all the challenges that are there. So mm, let me see, we have potholes first. The moment you leave your house, there's a pothole somewhere. So I need to master the route that I'm going. I know there's a pothole at a specific area. I know there'll be a rowdy matatu somewhere. I know there'll be a sneaky goat or a sneaky dog along the road. There could be anything, so you should be prepared. I think we all go to the same driving school, riding school. We all have the same board, we study that board. How you're going to maneuver from this road to that lane to the next one, that determines on how you're going to arrive at your destination. The whole point is to arrive at your destination alive and we always say share the road. So by that, um, take in all the precautions, all the obstacles. Uh, navigate your area at 180, at 360. You have your side mirrors, look at them. So when you come to the road, please, even though you're being harassed, open down your helmet, we will scream, you know, like <laughs> people. And then you just go on with it. So I, I cannot really talk about all the safety areas, all the security areas. I know there's so many blogs, there's so many podcasts, there's also a lot of material on YouTube. We have the dailies printing, the safety precautions and all that. So please be open to learning, be open to reading through, be open to taking all the learnings as fast. The moment I fall down on the road today, I'll need to analyze what did I do wrong. Then I take in the five, you could take in the aspect of the five whys, like why did I, why did I, why did I, get the reason out of it. Or go to my friend here, Wilba, Niliangu Kajana Aki, but I don't know what I did. Is it my tires? Did you do the five checks, the tick locks, as you call it? <laughs> it could be anything, you know? Taken into consideration, and then from there we learn. So every single day, the moment you get on your bike, every single day is a learning. So you learn from it. I know there are those who come in to ask you, um, I, I'm, I'm, bike sana. I want to get on the bike. I'm like, it starts in the head. Then now you go to the bike. Then now you go to your safety. This is your body. And this is all that is there. Like it has a cover. But when it comes to it, this is me. I need to protect what I'm thinking. Come on, attack up on the bike, you gonna stress. I, I don't have to do that. I can use a matatu. You have options. But if you want to use your bike, safety first. Albeit, the R squad is always up to something, including passing this passion to the next generation. Financial year for others starts in April, for others starts in September. For us, this starts in January. So we don't have a specific calendar of events. So we kind of run through it and see which is the best activity to pick up. We don't just settle on an event just because it will give us the publicity. We also look at the negative uh, side of it. So we do an analysis, we get an event, proposal from one of the team members, sit down, talk about it. I know there are, so, there are those who are um, having their day, day to day, eight to five. So we rarely get their information as, as, when, as and when you need it. So if a proposal comes through maybe in the morning, we'll have to read through, give them a deadline. You know we have WhatsApp. WhatsApp is a very major platform. So we raise up a poll, decide on it. So once this comes through, we have to look at the positivity. Does it have a, an impact to us? Will it destroy our image? Are we collaborating with someone else? So once we have this in play, then we look at the financials. Obviously you cannot go to an event empty-handed. You also need to find room of commuting from there to the exact say destination yeah? or event area. So we look at also who is available on this particular date. So we have to fix in the calendar. If we get one or two representatives, the better. If we get everyone in play, then the better. We participate in, in uh, different events, some self-organized, some we join as uh, partners, as friends, whichever event we do participate. As long as we feel it has an impact back to the society. The thrill of these two wheels is simply spectacular and the chase for this thrill is unending. <laughs>